In this video, we're going to have a look at this new model explorer, which is a new feature that came out as part of Power BI's October 2023 feature update. We're going to cover how you can enable it, some of the features that is available for you, and how you can start using this with your Power BI reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the Model Explorer is a feature that lets you view the semantic model of your data model. But what that means is it just basically lets you see the different features that you have on your data model, including some of the hidden ones all in one place. To enable this, you need to first update your Power BI desktop to the October version. And then from the settings, you'll need to go to File, and then under options and settings and options, you'll need to make sure you enable preview under the preview features, enable model explorer and calculation group authoring here. Restart your Power BI desktop. And then once you've restarted, you just need to make sure that you are in the model view and then you will find this new model explorer on the right hand side. So from the tables, you will have the new, this new tab, the model tab. Now you'll see from this model tab is you will have the semantic model available for you here. It's just giving you a bunch of different things here that you can view. Some of these you would probably most likely be familiar with. However, some things are a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to go through an overview on what they are and how you can use them, but we're not going to go too in too much detail. I'm just going to explain to you what they are and perhaps link you to some of my videos that already cover some of the aspects of the these things. So let's start from the top, which is calculation groups. So calculation groups are essentially a way for you to reuse your measures instead of recreating them. So as part of this new update, you will now have this option, the calculation group here from the ribbon on the top of your Power BI desktop. And you can also create the calculations directly here on the semantic model. Now, while this looks like it's a new feature, it's actually something that's already existed in Power BI for quite a while now. And in fact, I did cover it, it looks like about two years ago. And the reason why it's just coming out of Power BI desktop now is because previously, you could only customize or author calculation groups if you're using tools like tabular editor, which lets you tweak a lot more of the semantic model or kind of behind the scenes using tabular editor. However, now with this new update, it seems that you won't need tabular editor to create your calculation groups and you can just do them all directly in Power BI desktop. The next one here is cultures, which is essentially lets you view all of the translated versions of your data model. Now at the moment here, it's showing me just one culture here because I'm not using any translation tables or just translations in general in my data model. And you can, as far as I know, you can customize, you can customize them all within the tabular editor. So if you change and add different locales for your different things like your tables, your columns or measures. And uh, it seems to be a more sophisticated version of this solution that I created about multilingual reports. So if you want to learn more about the version that I created to solve translations, go check out my video. But it seems like because this one seems to be a lot more sophisticated, I'll see if I can cover it in a separate video by itself so that you know how to implement it. Next are measures, which I hope I don't need to explain to you are is basically where you put your DAX calculations in. So if you are a kind of a long time subscriber of my channel, you will know how to create or how to use measures, I hope. But the the model explorer just puts them all in one place, which makes it easier for you to sort of manage if you need to. The next thing available here are the perspectives. 
which is a feature that lets you group different elements in your data sets, tables, columns, measures, so that your users can use it as a means to personalize their visuals within the report and is typically used with this personalized visuals feature. Again, like calculation groups, it's not a new feature and it's in fact something that was released a few years back. However, to create these perspectives, you needed to create the perspective from the tabular editor and and then use it or enable the personalized visual. This feature also allows your users to change what data is being visualized on the X or Y axis. And the options that they get in terms of what data to use is controlled by perspectives. So now from here, you can see the different perspectives that is available to you if you want to use personalized visuals. Now, I don't see a way for you to create perspectives in Power BI Desktop the same way that you could with calculation groups. So I think you will still need to use Tabular Editor to create or manage your perspectives. But nonetheless, the semantic model gives you an easy access to show you what perspectives are available to you. The next thing here are the relationships, which is basically how your tables are related to each other. So like before, you will see or like the Manage Relationships view, it gives you a list of all the relationships that is available or that you have set up. And I really like this view just because it gives you at a glance, you know, quick view on what relationships you have, what the direction is, which columns it is being used. And then from here, you can basically open up the Manage Relationship view, which will let you manage that, edit that relationship. One cool thing about this new feature or this new relationships part in the model explorer is that if you right click and or if you right click on the relationships part and create a new relationship, it lets you create your relationships directly from the properties pane without having to bring up the manage relationship pane, which can sometimes take a long time to load, especially if you have a lot of data. And that's because it has to generate the data preview for you for both the the left and the right table. So if you don't want that hassle and you know what kind of relationship you want to use, you can simply just use this, set up your relationships, hit apply changes, and that's pretty much your relationship done. The next thing in our list are roles, which are essentially ways for you to create or manage security roles that you set up in your reports. And security roles lets you define what roles have access to what parts in your data model. So for example, employees from the UK should only be able to see sales within the UK region. Or managers, for example, should only be able to see records of their direct reports and not everyone else in the company. So this is enabled by creating security roles and then managing role level security. And if you don't know what I'm talking about or you have no clue about role level security and how to implement it, I did cover it in a separate video. So if you want to learn more, I'll leave a link somewhere in the screen here. Lastly, here are tables, which are essentially the tables like you would expect the tables that you have in your model. Now I have a bunch here and they have sort of different icons here as you noticed and will give you, if I just expand on one of them, like orders for example, it just gives you a bunch more options than just the columns. So you have the columns here as you would normally expect. So all of the different columns or fields that you have in those tables, you have hierarchies. So if you've created any hierarchies like date hierarchies or maybe organizational hierarchies, they will show up here. You'll have all the measures that are stored in this table. So as usual, we don't store our measures in random tables. We create a calculations measure table to store all of our measures like here. And then lastly, we have partitions. So partitions you shouldn't really need to worry about as a beginner. It is basically a way to optimize big data sets by putting them and slicing them into smaller chunks or partitions to kind of improve the performance of your reports just in general. And that's really it for this video. I hope 
that's helped you sort of understand this new model explorer and demystified some of these new things that you can see in this semantic model. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.